The goal of this project was to turn a cheap, run-of-the-mill Chromebook into something that was comfortable to use and somewhat capable. The end result was this, a Chromebook Ultrabook that's currently running Windows 10. Today's video is a documentation of the process, and it's pretty easy to follow along if you'd like to replicate it as well. I have a video guide on how to install Windows 10 on a Chromebook in the description, along with the products used and timestamps. Since the quarantine started, I've realized that I don't really need a powerful laptop. I pretty much just use the same few apps, Chrome, OneNote, Spotify, and Discord. Originally, my plan was to hack and tosh a Chromebook, but unfortunately, at the $50 to $100 range, there aren't really many used Chromebooks that are Hackintosh compatible. Mac OS requires a graphic tier of at least two, so any CPUs that are at graphics tier one are not Hackintosh compatible. Unfortunately, Celeron, Pentium, and a few i3 chips are all at graphics tier one, which many of the lower end Chromebooks have. The laptop that I ended up buying was the Acer C720 for $80, which has an Intel Celeron 2955U, four gigabytes of RAM, a 16 gigabyte drive and a TN panel. I also bought an 128 gigabyte drive for $25 and a replacement IPS screen for $65. This brought the total to $105 without the replacement screen and $170 with the replacement screen. Overall, the build quality isn't the greatest as you'd expect. There's quite a bit of flex in the screen. The keyboard isn't terrible, but can be a little mushy and the trackpad doesn't have the greatest feel, but it's still decent. For IO, it's got two USB-A ports, an audio jack, HDMI output, AC plug, SD card reader, and lock. It's fairly thin and more portable than most similarly priced laptops. Most will have cheap TN panels, hard drives, track pads with terrible feel, and will be fairly thick and not easy to carry around. I started by prepping my system to install Windows. First, I removed the hardware write protect by removing the write protect screw on the motherboard. This is used as a security implementation for Chromebooks, but since I'm flashing new firmware, we need to remove it. Next, I put my device in developer mode and flash the new firmware onto my Chromebook. This allows us to boot UEFI-based OSs. With the new firmware ready, I installed the 128GB drive. 16GB isn't a lot of space, and Windows requires a minimum of 32GB of space. Installing Windows is just like installing it on any regular PC, so it was fairly simple and straightforward. Keep in mind that you'll have to delete all of your data on your drive if you want to follow this process too. After that, I installed drivers for my trackpad and keyboard, and Windows installed drivers for audio and display. Finally, I replaced the default TN panel on the Chromebook with an IPS one. I first took off the bezel, then unscrewed the screen and disconnected it. I plugged in the new screen and screwed it back on and then put the bezel back on. The viewing angles and color accuracy are much better and the panel is way nicer to look at. I'm able to get around four to five hours of battery life just doing regular tasks, which isn't great, but it's enough to get me through an entire day of in-person school. The CPU severely underperforms, scoring 550 in multi-score and Cinebench R23, but I'm not really doing anything intensive, so it isn't really a problem. The drive also isn't fast by any means, but it's fairly fast in terms of boot up times and it's also pretty snappy and responsive. The only time where I can notice that it's slow is when transferring large files. Windows also works flawlessly. I haven't had any sort of compatibility issues or anything like that so far. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the result, and once in-person school starts up again, I'll be looking to use this as my daily driver at school. I'm also interested in hackintoshing a laptop, so if you're interested in that too, subscribe down below for more tech content.